Hello and welcome. We have recently produced stories on how rugged the B-17 Flying Fortress was and how it withstood tremendous damage to bring crews home. Today we look at the B-36 Convair Peacemaker, the nicknamed Aluminium Overcast. The B-36 was conceived of in 1941, built by Consolidated Convair and in service in the United States Air Force from 1949 to 1959. Too late for World War II, but just right for the Cold War. The B-36 is the largest mass-produced piston engine aircraft ever built. Its wingspan of 70 metres was the longest of any combat aircraft ever built, although shorter than the 97 metre Spruce Goose. The B-36 was the first bomber capable of delivering any of the US's nuclear weapons from within its four bomb bays. It had a range of 16,000 kilometres and a maximum payload of 39.6 tonnes, capable of intercontinental flight without refuelling. Convair named their project B-35 initially and had asked for 15.8 million to work it. The name was changed to B-36 to avoid confusion with the competing Northrop YB-35 piston engine flying wing bomber. In 1955, the jet-powered Boeing B-52 Strata Fortress began to replace the B-36s. Just four B-36 remain, all in museums. The B-36 radial engines were subject to fires and some crews humorously changed the aircraft's slogan from six turning, four burning into two turning, two burning, two smoking, two choking, and two more unaccounted for. This problem was exacerbated by the propeller's pusher configuration, which increased carburetor rising because the carburetor was in front of the engine and didn't benefit from engine heat. The genesis of the B-36 can be traced to early 1941, prior to the entry of the United States into World War II. They thought, should Britain fall to Germany and America declare war on Germany, a new class of bomber that would reach Europe and return to bases in North America would be needed. Germany was already working on the ultra-long-range America bomber program, the subject of a 33-page proposal submitted to Reich Marshal Hermann Goering on the 12th of May 1942. The US Air Force initial tender request was too ambitious for the technology at that time. These requirements were scaled back and a letter of intent was delivered to Convair, ordering an initial production run of 100 B-36s before the completion and the testing of the two prototypes. The aircraft was unveiled on the 20th of August 1945, three months after VE Day, and flew for the first time on the 8th of August 1946. The 1948 Berlin airlift and the 1949 atmospheric test of the first Soviet atomic bomb signalled that in this Cold War, an aircraft capable of carrying atomic weapons into Russia was needed. The fact that the Russians possessed jet fighters capable of taking on a piston-powered bomber was overlooked. The Boeing B-47 Stratojet wouldn't become fully operational until 1953, Besides, it lacked the range to attack the Soviet homeland from North America without aerial refueling. The other American piston bombers of the day, the B-29 and the B-50, were also too limited in range to be part of America's developing nuclear arsenal. Intercontinental ballistic missiles did not become sufficiently reliable until the early 1960s. During General Curtis LeMay's tenure, the B-36 formed the heart of the Strategic Air Command. Its maximum payload was more than four times that of the B-29 and exceeded that of the B-52. The B-36 was slow and could not refuel in mid-air, but could fly missions to targets 5,500 kilometres away and stay aloft for as long as 40 hours. For a piston-powered aircraft, it had a phenomenal cruising altitude of 49,000 feet, which put it out of range of most of the interceptors of the day, as well as ground-based anti-aircraft guns. The B-36 was two times longer than the previous super bomber, the B-29. 
the wings of the B-36 were large, even when compared with present-day aircraft, exceeding, for example, those of the C-5 Galaxy and enabled the B-36 to carry enough fuel to fly the intended long missions without refueling. The maximum thickness of the wing, measured perpendicular to the cord, was 7.5 feet, containing a crawl space that allowed access to the engines. Wouldn't want to be in there though. The benefit of 628-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP major pusher configuration was that it prevented propeller turbulence from interfering with airflow over the wing, but could also lead to engine overheating due to insufficient airflow around the engines. Ground crews hated changing the 336 spark plugs on those engines. The WASP major engines had a prodigious appetite for lubricating oil. Each engine required a dedicated 380 litre tank. Due to its massive size, the B-36 was never considered sprightly or agile. Lieutenant General James Edmondson likened it to sitting on your front porch and flying your house around. Crew compartments were nonetheless cramped, especially when occupied for 24 hours by a crew of 15 in full flight kit. Beginning with the B-36D, Convair added a pair of General Electric jet engines that suspended near the end of each wing. In normal cruising flight, the jet engines were shut down to conserve fuel. In all respects except speed, the B-36 could match what was arguably its approximate Soviet counterpart, the turboprop-powered Tu-95, which began production in January 56 and was still active in service as of February 2022. Due to problems that occurred with the B-36 in its early stages of testing, development and later in service, some critics referred to the aircraft as a billion dollar blunder. In particular, the United States Navy saw it as a costly bungle, diverting congressional funding and interest from naval aviation and aircraft carriers in general, and carrier-based nuclear bombers in particular. With the appearance of the Soviet MiG-15 in combat over North Korea in 1950, US Air Force propeller-driven bombers were rendered obsolete as strategic offensive weapons. Once replaced by B-52s, the B-36s were flown to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona, where they were scrapped. Though the B-36 had a solid overall safety record, well above average for the class and time, 10 B-36s were involved in accidents between 1949 and 1954. When a crash occurred, the magnesium-rich airframe burned easily. B-36s were involved in two broken arrow incidents. In February 1950, a B-36 crashed in British Columbia, Canada, resulting in the first loss of an American atomic bomb. In May 57, a B-36 accidentally dropped a thermonuclear bomb 7,200 metres from the control tower while landing at Kirkland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I bet that grabbed their attention. The weapon had come loose from its mount and fell through the bomb bay doors, creating a large hole in the bottom of the aircraft and sending the aircraft into an uncontrollable climb due to the sudden and unexpected loss of weight. Only the conventional explosives detonated as the bomb was unarmed. Thank goodness for that. The aircraft made a safe landing. The old saying that if you play with fire, you will get burnt comes to mind. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notify bell to promote more content.